Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon and I serve as your host. Here in Ventura, uh, through this program, we've been able to uncover lots of resources, everything from prosthetics for uh, Planet of the Apes, uh, innovation centers, 13-year-old girls inventing uh, new apps to look at food allergies, especially to peanuts for little Haley. But we also have a tremendous programs of education here. We have California Lutheran, Cal State Channel Islands, Ventura College, Oxnard College. One of the things, though, as a physician, when I first came here, uh, I was brought to the emergency room for a child with asthma. And the parents uh, did not speak Spanish. They didn't speak English. They spoke a, an Indian dialect. And so trying to get across to them, trying to get the, that health message, how to use that nebulizer, uh, this set me on a, a lifelong quest to increase health literacy for, for these people for whom your strawberry would cost $5 a strawberry if we, if we didn't have their uh, assistance in the fields. So today with me, uh, hopefully at the end of a long 25-year quest at trying to, 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 to work on this problem, is Gabriel. Uh, I met Gabriel at the uh, fundraiser that we had for the Tecchio scholarships yes. for the, uh, the Misteco. And Gabriel gave a, a talk. He has a scholarship. He'll be going to UC Santa Barbara uh, in mid-September. Yes. And uh, But I was asking him today, well, Gabriel, uh, we're going to run these lower thirds underneath. And what's your last name? Uh, my last name is, we don't have last name. Uh, because we were last, we're last name were erased when Spaniards came in our in our in our continent or in our in our village, and they they gave us a last name, which is my last name right now is Mendoza, which in Espinosa, and we don't have meaning for last name, even our name, because they, my last my my name mean like uh, something about God, but also uh, I don't know about, about God anymore, uh, but right now they. Like, we don't have last name, and like, I don't know, we don't have meaning about it, because uh, we, like our identity were erased, like even when they came, and the only we have right now is our language. Our language, even, uh, it's the only the language that only we have, uh, the costumes, all the all, all clothes, everything, our codex were gone. And we're here surviving with uh, uh, with our culture, with it's not, but uh, language is the only way we we have right now. So when you say uh, so, take us back 600 years. Yes. What, what was it? What was it like uh, in Oaxaca and Guerrero? And you know, the, right now, uh, you know, we have the Oaxaca citas out uh, yes. picking my strawberries. But this is a whole different part of Mexico. You, you're in a different. Uh, social environment uh, and yes. so and this is the history that you don't want to lose and we don't want to erase so being culturally sensitive for us yes. uh, I have to recognize that so tell me about about uh, the Mixteco people and and in, in Oaxaca in, in Oaxaca okay. and, and what it was like 600 years ago the history that you're you're trying to keep and that feeling of cultural identity that you want to keep yes uh I think like our ancestors, uh, they fought, like they they trying to pro like protect our our culture, our like like because they they trying to like to have our clothes, our belief, our God, our everything, our language, and our codex, which is important. Like what his story about, and now in Oaxaca, uh, it's different. It's different. What I born there. I know the language means don't I know I know I speak it. And like people is very different right now. They don't they want to be they don't want to be you know, brown. They don't they want to be white. They don't I feel I feel and even if even if they if some people say I'm wrong because I speak to them and some some of them they don't they don't like their their own their own language which is not it's not it's not necessary they say and which for me is is very important because you can create you can create a lot of stuff you can co communicate with people and even you can create a, a big poetry or 
uh, writing, you can make a lot of short stories. Uh, and it's 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 really it's like it's beautiful, but it's hard in this like people want to learn more English than is in Spanish, and people want to be like here, not here. They say so. Oh. Well, we want to communicate, yes. and so we sent uh, Dr. Carlos O'Brien and Dr. Maria Arismendi down there. They spent two weeks trying to learn <laughs> Mexico, and uh, 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 phonetically, uh, uh, they showed me the fence. Uh, there's a phonetic version of Mexico, and it says, basically, it translates to, this way to the bar. Yes. Uh, so that's about all the Mexico they were able to learn in, in, in two weeks. So uh, uh, when you gave your... Uh, uh, Thank you address to mm -hmm. the to the the MyCop, uh, uh fundraising event. You gave it in English, Spanish, and Mexico, and I felt the passion uh, in every word and in, in every language. Uh, so, your plans at UC Santa Barbara, uh, and, and what do you see for yourself in the future? And other, we have there. Are, I think there are ta twenty Techio scholars yes. there. Yes. Yes. Uh, so UC Berkeley to the local mm -hmm. junior colleges, Cal State Channel yes. Islands. So what what is it that you, that you see? What you what are you preparing yourself for? Oh, okay. Uh, I think like that speech that I gave in my club in the Nochon Oaxaca. I think that represent all of us, not only myself. That represent the twenty people, the twenty students, also the community who were there. And for me, like I was thinking, like I want to be professor, history professor, also. Uh, I want to know all the history in Latin America and how like, our culture as well, Mesteco. I want to write our own books to share with the community, to know their own history. Uh, I want to be a leader. I want to be a leader who, who can make a, a leaders from Mesteco community and documented community, like Im immigrant community. And that is very important for me because, like, like even here in Mexico, we don't feel sometimes we don't feel home because nobody care. Doesn't matter; they don't they don't care about us. But what I mean is, uh, when we were when sometimes we go in stores, they treat us, they treat, this, discriminate us, and it's hard to believe in in society which. We want to be part of, but they don't want to be us to be part of that society. And that's why we had to create a new world for us, new for, but we had to create for us, ourselves. Our, we had to create and leaders, like a mistake called leaders, like a little students, farm workers, farm workers, students, we had to create leaders for, to speak up for us. And that thing, that's the, we had to, that's how I see it in the future, yes. Well, one of the things that, that uh, I'll be working on is, uh, is the, the radio station, Radio Indigena. So, so there, there's an opportunity for people in the community to, to speak, uh, an opportunity to hear music that's, that's your own. Uh, and on radio, where you can listen in the fields, listen at home, grim abuelitas or, on, on Sundays can can hear, but it gives me an opportunity for health literacy too, uh, to give messages about health, about getting vaccines and prenatal care and uh, getting ready for school and, and resources that are available, but in people's native language. I think well, we, we really have to be able to, to do that. Uh, the, right now, if I bring in a, a translator uh, and there's Alta, Baja, yes. so there's a high, high Oaxaca yes. and low Oaxaca and the coast of Oaxaca. Yes. And, and if the translators are not from the same social cast, even though it's left over from times <laughs> hundreds of years yes. ago, so economically things have gotten squished down for, yes. for the Mixteco, they'll argue. And I'll have no idea, but this, it seemed like a simple question. Yes. It's very, I'm hearing all this, yes. the, the, the very musical, yes. mistakeful language, but I, I know there's other things going on. Uh, I went down to Oaxaca to, to uh, uh, speak at the university about asthma and, oh. uh, and Sandy Young, who's uh, our oh. nurse practitioner, who really yes. took on 
uh, providing backpacks to get kids ready for school and really help get Mistaco, they get the MyCop uh, going, the, the Mistaco yes. program. Uh, and I gave my speech on asthma and I talked in Spanish <laughs> the whole time. And it was, yes. oh, uh, the uh, check sus novios para moco, moco es amarillo, besame no mucho. Do, you know, yes. check your girlfriends for mucus, and if it's green, don't kiss them, because if you get yes. sick, you'll get asthma. Got laughs pretty much on time. When she spoke, there, there were 150 people in the room, all, uh, and not a single word, not a single question, not a clap, not a, an acknowledgement. And what that told me is that, the, that in Oaxaca, you have the same social discrimination uh, uh, going on. Uh, so coming here uh, and finding Trump wanting to put up a wall yes. and, and ICE and all those things. So how, uh, how old were you when you came, came uh, uh, from, from Mexico? I came here when I was 13 and I was like my dream, my parent dreams because I was a little kid and they asked me, let's go to the Norte and I don't know what is Norte. And North, North, North America. No. I didn't know what is Norte. What is Norte? And oh, let's go t to work. And he said, oh, okay, let's, uh, uh, well, we crossed the border, everything. And he said, you have to work. And where? In the strawberries. And I don't want to work in the strawberries, but I worked a little bit in the strawberries. And then I went to school. And I was afraid of going to school because uh, and then he speaks in Spanish, which many people argue with me because you're Mexican, why you don't, why you don't speak Spanish? And like, I was like, I don't know, in, in that time I was afraid that, that Spanish is a, you should, like, if you're Mexican, you should speak Spanish. And now that I'm Mexican, that if you're Mexican, you can speak Spanish, Mixteco, or Mexica, or Purepecha. Or mm -hmm. different la native mm -hmm. language, yes. and but yes, I was here. It's it, a lot. Of, it's, a, it's a lot of discrimination, and they, they like. I, I I admire the that the first teacher who was there for me. She's she's from here. She's a white teacher, but she really understand us. She really, uh, she gave us a phone number. We can call her if we need anything. But she was. A teacher who can, who we can trust, and even it's it's hard to be here. Even sometimes, like I don't know, we're mistaken. We're coming here. We don't we don't know the language, and we had we had to be we had to accustom. We had to be in part of this society, but sometimes uh, we need some people who can help us. So. Yes. Well, the, the people I saw in the audience mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, Mike Powers, who's head of yes. the county, uh, representatives from, from the state, uh, uh, from the uh, California Senate, uh, representatives from the federal government, uh, the mayor of, of uh, Oxnard. So what's happened in the community is they recognize uh, the value uh, and, and looked at these 20 kids on stage. It's just examples of more to come. That uh, uh, the, the, when we when, uh, we have education in Mexico, oftentimes we find uh, it, my Spanish-speaking patients. It stopped in third grade, or it stopped in fourth grade. Yes. Uh, and so that limits you educationally. We were talking a little bit earlier about women and, and yes. the role that machismo uh, that's yes. so present in Mexican society yes. is in, in the mistake was. Well, can, can, so tell, tell, can you talk to that a little bit, just a woman's place? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I really respect women. I really, that's like my mother, my abuelita, I respect them. And they, they're strong women. Even like, it's a lot of domestic violence a lot of, like, I see it, like, I was born there, and some, well, some men, like, hitting their wife and in front of their kids. And I think it's not good, but we have to, like, I think today is that we have to educate them. People from here, some people in, who are here, but, you know, over there, they're, they're not education, they're not, they're nothing, so, it's like, it's cycle, it's still going.
still going. Even if we teach them, but we had to, I think teach them, we had to give them different style of teaching, I think. Because teaching, uh, teaching them all about, about books, everything, sometimes it's hard to, for people to read a book. Okay, some people give a, give a voucher to the community. Read this, know your rights, or know your, how you can defend about ICE, or know how you can protect your family. The, it's hard for people who didn't went to school to read a book or, or a, a catalog. And that's why some people don't understand because even if you you have to give them a a personal oral like meeting something that's I believe is working. Well, when I looked at that stage, I think it was mm -hmm. probably about half women, half yes. men who were yes. heading off to college. So, so there's some change there that's that's yes. helping. But again, because of that oral tradition, that's why I think it's so important for us to support Radio Indigena Ventura County, Radio Indigena, MyCop support. Uh, so we talked a little bit about colonialism too. I mean, when I when I go to uh, yes. uh, Africa in, oh. in, in uh, Monrovia, uh, uh -huh. Liberia, uh, it's Samaritan's Purse, and, and they're they're building a, a, a wonderful hospital. They built a wonderful hospital, uh, but they're they're uh, the son of Billy Graham is the one who gets those millions of dollars to <laughs> to put that together. But they're on every single. Uh, health danger point. They're mm -hmm. there. They're, yes. they're helping people out. So in terms of pushing the American culture, the Catholics, of course, were yes. all over Latin America. Yes. As Spaniards, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, a little more violently than, than yes. others. So how, how, do you, how do you not get enculturated? I, when I, when I, mm -hmm. as a physician, I see, oh gosh, you're in, you're in the United States now. There may be seven people living in a, in a one bedroom house with a landlord who doesn't care for it very well, yes. but I can spend a dollar and buy you a Coca-Cola. <laughs> and so I see these kids gaining yes. weight or I'll see them stressed in, in school with the, yes. with the, with the bullying. Uh, so how can we, what can we do to help help health? Uh, how, what can we communicate? How can we support it? Oh, I think the more important, the more important is about like meeting, I think meeting is w really working because some, some community, some people, some families, they like, involved in my cup in, in different organizations, they know about how if you live a little small uh, room with seven kids or seven, a lot of people, you can, like, there are disease or some different things. And I think it's trying to uh, educate them. But some in, that, in different case, in different alternatives, uh, which Ventura County is, a lot, is, you have to be a little bit, you have, you have to have a little money to be, so to, uh, in, to a poor or to be in, in, the, in big house, which sometimes many family, they don't can afford to live in big house. So like, I, I don't know, it's- So, so housing, nutrition. So nutrition is, it's like, it's they buy the lowest, the cheap fruit or cheap, the cheapest, everything. Because we can afford, we work in the fields, many people work in the fields to, so people, so that people who have money to buy their fruits or to buy their vegetables, but they can't afford them to be in their table, which is very sadly, very sadly, because they, their own, it's like a, they don't, they can't afford anything. And the, I, I know this because I, I work in the fields and which is, uh, in, they pay you like, a, they, don't, they pay you nothing, which is, and I, they argue, they say that you don't, you, you, you didn't went to school, that's why we don't want to pay you, or you don't have, you don't speak Spanish, and that's, it's a, it's a conflict going in everywhere. It's a society, I think, I don't know. So do you think of that as colonialism? I mean, here we have this slave culture there. Yes. We have the, the wealthy uh, uh, owners of the farms. And yes, I feel it's colonial, colonialism. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to say it, but I feel it because uh, even right now, many, many companies, they, 
like they, like they, they go Mexico and bring a lot of many communities to work here, and they don't pay like it should should pay like a, like it, which is right, and it's very common cases that right now they give it like the like the food which is which a lot of diseases and it's 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 it's, it's coming like a. I think it's, we're coming in the, it's like a cycle. We're going again in the back again, which is different times, different, different idea, different everything, but it's the same thing. It's the same as the Spaniards <laughs> yeah, 600 years ago. It's the same thing, which is like com the company want to exploit the community. They want to, the companies, everything want to exploit the poor community. And who's losing? The people of color who they don't they can they can afford anything, and a lot of my cousins work in the fields, which is they had like 14, 15 years old, and they can't afford, they can't go to school because they they can't the money is not enough to feed themselves. Well, Dr. Miguel Cervantes, who's mm -hmm. at, uh, the head of our Las Islas clinic, yes. worked in oh, the fields. Uh -huh. And so you're you're seeing a way out, and I'm hoping and dragging, yes. being dragged along with with uh, <laughs> yes. twenty other young men and women. Uh, so, so we have to. So education is part of the way out. Yes. Nutrition is part of the way out. Yes. Access to health care uh, is part of the way uh, yes. out. So, uh, <laughs> what else can we do to uh, uh, mm -hmm. to keep your community together? But Learn something from your community too. So, at my cop at the at the, uh, the, 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 the the night of stars, yes. uh, what, what kinds of things did we did we come come away with from that community in terms of food and clothing and so oh. forth? So, what, what what do you bring to to us? What are you sharing with, with uh, us okay. as we as we're together yes. in society? Uh, yes. Uh, well, in food and it's I don't know. It's hard to because. Which is this? I don't know how to answer well, that. Well, in, in in Oaxaca, when yes. I when I went, there is a festival all the time. Yeah. Uh, every night you're there until uh, uh, ten o'clock at night, <laughs> uh, uh, midnight, talking, and there's music going yes. on. So you, you bring music. Yeah, music. Uh, very uh, unique kind of music. Yes. Uh, uh, poetry. Uh, yes. Art. Uh, Food, uh, uh, my uh, yeah, food, a lot of mole, a lot of different kind of food, <laughs> yeah. So, and what kind of so in terms of uh -huh. how, how can we learn from your your culture? Yeah, uh, so you have you uh, there is a blessing. There. Yes, and the blessing that 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 was that we need to look uh, to the east. Oh, this I think that's the Mexica. Yeah, uh, that's Mexica, uh, but like okay. for us, uh, what would uh, be equivalent to that? Yes, yes, uh, we uh, like my ancestor taught me, which is I always thank to be thanks of the Mother of the Earth who give you everything, and, and Father of the Sun, which they are always there who feed our family, even <laughs> even I think they are the important. So yes. the Mother Earth, who we Mother are. Earth. Destroying with pesticides yes. and uh, destroying our atmosphere. And yes. The Father, Son, is providing us with energy. But uh, what was most I, I yes. realize now it's a Mashika. Uh, the, the, the to looking to the men who work in the fields. Yes, and it's part of the blessing. The women yes. who are working at home to prepare the meals, the past, the culture. It's called yes. culture pasado. So the things yes. that happened in the past, but also to the children in the future. Uh, so how, as you go through mm -hmm. UC Santa Barbara and, uh, and your summary here, what, what is it that you're coming, you're going to bring back? Uh, I, I really want to, because I had this idea that I want to create a leaders who can improve in Oxnard, in Ventura County, and not even, not to fight for their family, also give language and give new culture in Mixteco, which, which a lot of people, a lot of youth, youth people, young people, new generation coming, coming, and they have different, different, they speak Mixteco, they speak, 
we, we can give classes of Mixteco. I'm teaching Mixteco right now, and which is it's important in the community who want to learn Mixteco, who want to know our language. The like because they are also a chief like chef, which is the women who make a lot of mole or different kind of food in Mixteca, and I think that's very important because I know her a little bit, but she's very good in in in, in all this stuff or of how to be how to cook a, a special traditional foods in. So that's, I think that's important, yeah. All right, so Ventura, uh, we want to uh, thank Gabriel for, for joining us. Uh, and uh, I really need to raise money for Radio uh, Indigena. Uh, we're gonna be working very hard to set up podcasting classes so that I can capture Gabriel and the other 20 uh, scholarship recipients, really talking about things that are important, not just to their culture, and. Uh, having a food show, I think, uh, would be pretty important too. Uh, but also being able to hear in their native language, hear their uh, native music, uh, and, and really retain their culture while they're present in ours, while they're doing such a great service uh, to, to our table. As we move things from uh, farm to table, they are very, very much a part of it. I really want to see vans with uh, seat belts instead of seeing people piled up in the back of uh, pickup trucks on their way out to the fields, uh, adequate hydration in the fields. We see lots and lots of chronic kidney disease because of dehydration. Uh, I really want to see good access to, to medical care where there's a medical team that uh, can speak Mixteco and, and is uh, familiar with, uh, with cultures and uh, can enjoy it the way I do. Uh, one of my patients bring in uh, moles uh, as well. So. Ventura, it's time for you to get moving. Necesito amor para crecer.